Hey guys again, um, so happy 4th of July, even though I'm probably going to post this after the 4th of July. Um, but uh, in my last video, I was talking about protoplanetary disks, and I actually had a few questions about star formation, um, and also the death of stars, because I was mentioning um, how in order for there to be um, an accretion disk to start to form and a possible planetary system to form around these newborn stars inside of the proplid, um, we, they had to be very far, a, a relatively far distance from this nearby O star. And I got a few questions about what the O star is because of saying how it gives off this immense amount of radiation that's just really powerful and it was actually causing any type of material or mass or matter that was accreting to just get completely blown out of orbit um, because this radiation and these stellar winds from this O by star was so powerful. So um, to help you guys up with that, I drew out an HR diagram. So HR stands for Hirschsprung Russell, which were two gentlemen that derived this diagram. Up here I have the spectral class, O-B-A-F-G-K-M. That's just an easy way for us to classify uh, the stars so that we don't have a thousand different, oh, well, this type of star, you guys get the point. Um, on the right side, I have absolute magnitude. This is the size, approximate size of the star. Um, down here, I have the temperature in degree Kelvin. Um, zero degrees Kelvin is approximately negative 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. So down here, I have um, I wrote 3K, that's 3,000 um, degrees Kelvin. So I wrote 3K, 4.5K, so it's uh, 4,500 uh, degree Kelvin. Uh, 5,500 degree Kelvin all the way up to 40,000 Kelvin. Then on this side I have the luminosity. Luminosity is its brightness. Um, up here is extremely bright. Down here is extremely dim. Um, I have the sun at um, 1. So that way we can compare uh, how our own star is compared to other stars on the HR diagram um, with relative brightness. So Right along here is the main sh sequence stars. Um, this is uh, just an easy way. This is the majority of the stars in um, our universe and in our galaxies. Um, you have a really wide range here. But um, I'm going to go into specifics here. I'll start with uh, red supergiants and red giants. So these stars are pretty cool. They're only at about 3,000 Kelvin degrees. Um, they're actually very large in size. They're very, very big stars. Um, they're much bigger than our sun, uh, at an absolute magnitude of negative 5, negative 10. Um, and they're also um, relatively bright, actually, and that's just because of how big they are. Um, these generally will die through um, just an expansion. They um, are just really cool stars. Um, they do live for a very long time. They have a very long lifetime. And as they expand, they'll just start to um, disintegrate into our universe and its elements will start to just separate. Um, then we move to blue giants. There are also blue supergiants like Rigel in the Orion constellation. These stars, you want to avoid at all risks. They are intensely hot, young stars, rapidly rotating. They live only a very short lifetime. They are somewhere around 40,000 to 20,000 Kelvin. They are extremely hot. Like I mentioned in my last video, there was a nearby O star. So an O star would be right around here. I just didn't have enough room to draw it. Um, those stars have a really high amount of ultraviolet radiation that they emit. Um, these stars, their death is of the most dramatic in our universe. There's only about 0.0003% of stars are um, um, very massive blue supergiant O stars. Um, you really want to avoid these at all costs. They're usually found towards the edges of the spiral arms of galaxies. Um, and they're also found in uh, newborn star areas like in nebulae, um, or like the Orion Nebula, like I said. Also, nebulae is the plural form of nebula. So these stars die a really dramatic death. They die through supernova explosions uh, with gamma ray bursts coming out. All their elements just start spewing out through their um, two very um, polar opposite ends, and it just starts to explode. And these 
most of the time will result in um, a black hole. This is because there's just so much pressure build up. There's so much energy and there's just um, so many elements and it's so dense that as it explodes, it'll expand and it is possible for it to collapse again into a very, very hot, dense neutron star. A neutron star is um, of the most dense stars of the solar system and it is um, theorized that inside of a black hole is a neutron star that is much more dense than the neutron stars that we we have already observed and this is simply because we have not been able to go into a black hole however as you guys might know um, black holes constantly collect material. The only way we can see a black hole, which I'll do a separate video about it, um, is because of its um, area right around it. I don't remember the name right now, but it's area right around it where all the elements are starting to accrete. Um, all the stars are starting to collect because its gravity is so powerful and stars and matter start to fall in. And all of this is actually collecting with that star that's all the way at the core of this black hole. Um, and so we, we can assume that it's a lot more dense than the neutron stars we know about. So <laughs> now I'll get into um, our sun. So our sun is right about here, very comfortable um, emitting star. Uh, it's at about 550, 100 degree Kelvin, a really great temperature for life. Um, its magnitude is a really great uh, size, between 5 and 10 um, absolute magnitude, and its luminosity, uh, luminosity is the 1, um, as you guys see. So these um, stars, like our sun, will generally die through just an expansion. Um, it's a very calm death. They actually live for quite a long time also, um, the yellow-orange stars. And um, it'll just keep expanding. Uh, it'll definitely... Um, fry up our sun, oh, fry up our, our planet, uh, it'll be very hot and it'll just keep expanding and it'll be pulling in um, uh, lots of different nearby um, um, objects and lots of uh, planets, all the planets will start to fall into its gravitational pull. Um, then you have white dwarfs. So white dwarfs are usually uh, the remnants of um, a, a, a nebula. They're usually what is in the core of a nebula. Um, so a nebula is usually the result of um, a, some, some supernova explosions. So you have some stars that are more around here, um, about twice the uh, luminosity of the sun, twice as bright as the sun, um, at about an absolute magnitude of zero. Um, it is relatively hot, but not extremely hot. They do live for quite some time, um, but they can explode. And uh, when they do explode through its death, um, a lot of times there's still a very strong gravity that's towards the center and this is usually what a white dwarf is. Um, the white dwarfs will have, um, they're, they're pretty dense, um, they're very very hot, um, but they're really small and they're not so uh, bright, um, but they'll have a really strong gravity and so because of this gravity all the elements that just um, were exploded from this death of uh, one of the other stars um, will actually be held together sort of like a shell um, or like a bottle, if you will, like a bowl. Uh, and that's what a nebula looks like. Um, that's what the gas cloud is. It's actually being held together by the gravity of this white dwarf star. Um, eventually, these will just keep expanding the, the gaseous cloud and it'll leak out its elements and its um, matter and its mass um, into the universe um, and just very calmly. But a lot of times in this beautiful cloud of elements of, um, I mean, everything that we're made of, uh, of oxygen, nitrogen, helium, um, there's newborn stars that'll form. Um, and like Orion and like what I did in my last video, protoplanetary disks. Um, so it's, there's lots of possibilities there. Um, so yeah, um, anyway, when I was in high school, I'm just going to give this cute little snippet. Um, my first astronomy class, we were doing simulations through Astrolab, which was on these like old chunky computers um, where you would punch in uh, the spectral class and absolute magnitude and you would have to guess uh, what its death would be like. So it was super cool because it would show this, it would have this simulation of um, a star and then you would punch it in, you guess, and then you press enter 
and it'll either like you know s disperse into a beautiful you know super giant that'll just start to expand um, infinitely, or it will explode into a supernova, or it will collapse into a black hole, and it's just the coolest thing ever. And um, anyway, I'm gonna end this video now. Uh, I just want to say uh, again, it's the Fourth of July, and um, I just found out that um, I'm going to be downloading um, for Juno the spacecraft through NASA I. Uh, I'm going to be downloading the software so we can actually watch the spacecraft um, space shuttle as it arrives to um, Jupiter. It's super cool. It should be arriving around 8.35 p.m. today. Um, I believe. So yeah, check it out. It's just um, a spacecraft. It's not a shuttle, so there's no people in it. Um, but there's definitely lots of really cool information there. And I heard that I can mess with the simulations of the auroras on Jupiter. Um, and I'd love to do also a video about that because that's just the most beautiful thing ever, the northern lights. And it has to do with the electromagnetic uh, field of the planets. Um, and us too as humans have an electromagnetic pulse, an electromagnetic field, so we also do send off this insane amount of energy. Um, and Shark Week, happy Shark Week, because sharks are have a sixth sense where they're able to detect this electromagnetic uh, pulse that people give off and uh, living creatures give off, and it's just the most fascinating thing ever. So yeah, I'm full of energy today, guys. Um, so take care and thank you for watching. If you have any questions, seriously, ask me. Um, I would love to talk about more. I just want to keep rambling right now, but I don't know what else to talk about. Anyway, okay, thanks for watching, guys, and talk to you next time. Woo! Bye, guys.